Rand Paul supported ousting FBI Director Comey. He was the only no vote during Comey's 2013 confirmation. Senator Paul joins us from Capitol. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. Thanks for having me. It is quite unusual to fire an FBI director, if not unprecedented, for the reasons. Should President Trump had a replacement in mind when he did it? You know, I don't know that, but I would say Bill Clinton would be the president. I guess that was the last president who fired an FBI director. After an ethics investigation. Is it okay with you that Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who had recused himself from the investigation, was pretty much involved in the decision to let James Comey go? Does that square with you? You know, I think we've probably never had someone fired where both sides actually really agreed with the firing more than you would imagine. Almost every prominent Democrat in the country has called for Comey's ouster. Most Democrats felt like he insinuated Hillary Clinton's guilt and then did not indict her. Most Republicans felt like, well, you know, with all the evidence of her guilt and with him saying so much in the press conference about what she did wrong, why didn't he indict her? So I don't think you've ever had an FBI director where both sides actually were very unhappy with him. Harry Reid called for his ouster. But Senator, Chuck that's Schum not the question. Chuck Schumer. That's not the Chuck question. Schumer, that's, Senator, Chuck, excuse, Chuck, me, Chuck excuse Schumer, me for interrupting you. But let me that, finish my sentence. But Chuck question. Schumer, Chuck so, Schumer also said he had lost confidence in him. So I think it is the question. Mm -hmm. Both sides really had lost confidence in him, and I think that's why he's gone. No, the question is, is it okay with you to have Attorney General Jeff Sessions be involved in this decision um, when he had recused himself from the investigation? Right. Well, the, the hierarchy is that the FBI director works for the Department of Justice and works for the Attorney General and works for the assistant attorney general and so I think that you would go through a normal process to review someone's work record before getting rid of them and I think had they summarily dismissed Comey earlier on without going through that process you know all the left-wing media would have been up in arms with that too but I think it is funny though that nobody's really emphasizing the hypocrisy of Democrats who were all for his ouster and have clamored I mean move on.org has got a huge petition to get rid of him all right the left has wanted to get rid of him for six months we finally do what the left wants and now they can only complain and uh, make up stories about how it means oh the end of the republic uh, but uh, I think it's far from that no senator it's clear that people on both sides wanted him to go the question has always been about the timing of it that's all senator let yeah, me ask yeah, you no but 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 the, the explanation I think is a very reasonable one the explanation is they needed to go through a work review of his uh, and have someone evaluate it from his boss's point of view and his bosses were delayed by Democrats for months we had the slowest approval of a cabinet really in the history of our country because of partisan differences. So Sessions was delayed, and then so was his assistant. When they finally got in place, they did a review. And I absolutely believe that from the election, there's been discussion of letting Comey go because nobody's been happy with him. Okay. I've also been unhappy with him because of his concerns about privacy, but also with concerns about investigating uh, the Orlando killing. I think the FBI dropped the ball. There were many warning signs that could have led to a stopping the Orlando shooting, and I think the FBI would never admit that they made any mistakes in that, and I think we're unwilling to really improve the process. An important, an important point. I, Senator, I know you're on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. I want to get your take on what occurred in the Oval Office yesterday. Um, President Vladimir Putin asked, uh, President Trump to invite the foreign minister and the ambassador into the Oval Office. These only pictures were released, um, came from the Russian media. What's your take? I'm not sure what the point is uh, or what your question is. What do you think of inviting the Russian foreign minister and the ambassador into the Oval Office? You know, I'm a big proponent of diplomacy as opposed to war, and I think any time we can have relations, even with our adversaries, it's a good idea. And uh, I think the biggest mistake we have, and really the, the worst part of Washington is, you know, I was at a meeting yesterday with uh, General McMaster in the National Security Council, and every Republican, every Democrat wants to increase troops from Afghanistan. There's very few voices here who don't want more war. So when Trump does something that shows that he is entertaining diplomacy as opposed to that war is always the answer, we should stand up and cheer because there's too many Republicans and too many Democrats up here who want nothing more than perpetual war. And you think Russia can be our friend in Afghanistan? No, I think throughout the world, a realistic approach is that Russia is our adversary, and on many fronts we will confront them, but on others we will understand that they're not necessarily going away. They've been in Syria for 50 years, they have a naval base there, they're not going away. The ultimate answer in Syria will include Russia, whether we like it or not. That's the realistic point of view, and I think Trump's uh, administration is leaning more towards realism than maybe the neoconservatism of George W. Bush, so I'm very hopeful. All right, Senator Paul, always good to have you here. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.